Hello everyone, this is Highlander from MTG Cardsmith, and I'm doing a custom Magic the Gathering card review. And today we're reviewing a card by Shadow Rain called Yorvin Grimoire Adept. Okay, he knows how to read the books. Um, so let's see what we got here. We got a Grixis 1-3, Legendary Human Wizard. Excuse me, I burped. When Yorvin Grimoire Adept enters the battlefield, you may return target purged card you own from exile to your hand. Uh, okay, and we didn't purge is down there, so we'll read that in a minute. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Yorvin deals damage equal to its power to any target. Excuse me. Okay, so. And you can pay three to return them to your hand to purge two. Look at the top two cards of your library, then exile any number of them face down. Put the rest on top of your library in a random order. In a random order. Interesting. The random order thing's a little weird. I feel like you should just let them put it in any order that they want, right? Um, oh yeah, sorry, that kind of kind of threw me off there. Feel it feels like you should just let them put it back in any order. I mean, a random order. That's just kind of annoying. I don't know. Like, what if you want both cards on top, and then you just happen to get them in the wrong order? That really sucks. Yeah, you should just. I mean, this is this is basically scry, except the cards you don't want you exile them, right? Except now they're like kind of random scrying. I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not big into that part of of it. Um, okay, let, let, let's let's read this guy again. So when he enters the battlefield, you get to return a purge card you own from exile to your hand. So, but these are face down. I think you can still look at these though, right? I mean, you've already seen them, so presumably you can. Um, so you know which is which. You got to do the little poker thing and like go er and just kind of like creep the card up a little bit, you know. Um, okay, so you you get so you get a card back from exile. Presumably, there's other ways to purge. Um, whenever you cast an instant resource spell, he'll deal damage equal to its power to any target. So one, and then three return them to your hand. Purge two. Um, Okay, so to me, this guy is, uh, so design-wise, this guy is fine. Um, he's a he's a nice Grixis spell enabler, um, which you know, always, always always a big fan of Grixis spells, right? Um, I think my main issue with this card is it seems a little bit weak for a mythic. Um, I do think this should be mythic, by the way. I, I think just for complexity reasons. Uh, I mean, maybe you could you could get it to a rare, perhaps, but um, no lower than that, obviously. So, okay, so for for blue, black, red, your stats are quite low here. You're you're at one three, right? Um, that's pretty bad. I mean, one three, you can get that. You know, I mean, you could. You could probably make a one mana card that's a one three these days. I mean, you wouldn't, but like, it's kind of close, right? Um, and we're talking vanilla, of course. So, the fact that this guy's Grixis mana and is a one three. I mean, yes, he has other abilities, but stats wise, he's very poor. Okay, he's very poor in the stats department. So his abilities have to make up for it. Um, now, when he enters the battlefield, you can get a. Oh, it's, it's not even instant or sorcery. It's any purge card from exile to your hand. I thought it was an instant or sorcery, but it's it's any purge card. Okay. So assuming that you have other ways... Purge card. Okay, I do like that you're specifying purge cards here. Um, in one of the previous videos, I complained a little bit about you know generic exile. I like here that you're specifying that they are purged cards. Okay, so... Presumably, this is a mechanic in your set, so there are other ways to purge cards. So, I, let's just say when you're playing this guy, you're all, you're guaranteed to get a card back of your choice from uh, your your purge 
uh, pile or whatever, right? Um, so that's pretty good. So it's like you play this guy, essentially draw a card. It's better than draw a card, I think. Depending on how many cards you have purged. Um, yeah. Actually, if you have one card purged, it's draw a card, essentially. If Well, kind of. Because usually the cards you purge are cards that you don't want to draw. So maybe it's maybe per if you have one card purge, this is maybe worse than draw a card. If you have two cards purge, it's probably about the same. And if you have more than that, it's better than draw a card. Uh, about that, I would I would think. Um, and then whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, he deals damage equal to its power to any target. Of course, he's one power, so you need to have ways to augment his power for this to actually really matter. Um, but that doesn't synergize super well with this here. So ways to augment this guy, okay? There's equipment, auras, plus one, plus one counters. You don't see that a lot in, in these colors, though, um, any of those things. I mean, usually this is like a control. I guess red has equipment and stuff. But that color combination is generally like a control deck, so you, you're not generally playing a lot of like power augmenting things. Um, so yeah, I mean, you could maybe play like, I mean, you could play instants or sorceries that buff him, but that doesn't actually even work because it's whenever you cast. So like if you, if you targeted, if you like cast like, um, I don't know, some sort of a red combat trick on this guy, like plus two plus O, oh, uh, he doesn't even get to deal three damage because it's a cast trigger. So he would deal one damage, and then he would get the plus two, plus O, oh, right? So you really have to... You can't really augment him very much with spells unless you're, like, somehow doing some sort of weird, crazy combo thing where you, like, keep making him bigger and bigger and bigger and pinging. Um, but that seems unlikely. So you, you're basically looking at e equipment, right? Because if you put an aura on this guy, then you don't really want to use this return clause, right? Um, so it's basically got to be equipment, but every time you return him, you're de-equipping him. Uh, so it's sort of a little, there's sort of a little bit of an anti-synergy there. Like, yeah, your equipment stays around, but you have to pl pay that equip cost again, right? So uh, in that sense, it's like a little too slow. So the damage equal to its power here is a little awkward, I think. Like... It would. This card might feel better if it just said deal one damage to any target. To be honest, you know, um, that's a pretty small bonus, but at least it because it, it's just this way. There's like there, there's like hope of this somehow working out, but it's going to be so rare. I I feel like that. It just it just doesn't seem worth putting this text on here. I mean, okay, so you let's say let's ignore this like return him clause for a minute, right? Okay, so let's say you're you're, you're trying to get the most value out of your event and you put equipment in your deck. Okay, so you equip him with like a bone a bone splitter, which is plus two plus zero equipment, right? Now he's a three three, so okay, he can like attack decently, um, and then whenever you cast an extra or sorcery, now you're dealing three damage. To any target which is very strong um but you have to have but like okay but now you're like splitting your deck uh synergies into wanting spells and equipment and presumably creatures because if you have equipment you need creatures to put them on now in commander you can always play this guy for, you know, if this guy's your commander, you can always have access to him. So there is that. But beyond that, like, so like imagine, imagine you're playing like a bone splitter, even, even a commander, right? So let, imagine you're playing some, some number of equipment, right? You play this guy, you equip him, they kill him. And so now, like, Okay, you have to wait until turn... F yeah, you can recast them and you can re-equip them, but that costs a lot of mana. And now you have this bone splitter sitting around that's just not doing anything. You're, you're just... You're like... 
major down a card, right? So it's like this, like, yes, if you, if you're ever able to buff this guy up, it's like crazy good for you. But I feel like that is so rare that you might as well just make the save one damage. Cause otherwise there's like hope. There's like this dream and there's just never, it's, it's like a, it's like a trap. It's just like never happening, you know? Um, because what you really want with this guy is you, you just want this guy and you want a bunch of spells, right? You don't want this guy, spells, and equipment, and then probably creatures so that your equipment's not dead if they kill this guy. And now all of a sudden, like, you have, like, too many synergies going on that, that none of them will really come together enough of the time. You, you know what I mean? That's kind of where I'm coming from. So, anyway, and, and my rant about that. Um, or, heck, make it do two damage, you know, whatever, right? But... I feel like the, the power thing is, is a little bit of a trap. Um, anyway, okay, so this other ability, uh, you can pay three and return to a hand to purge two. So this, so at that point, he becomes like a very slow card advantage engine, right? Where you get to return him to your hand, you get to sort of scry two, except random scry. Um, and then when you replay him, you get to draw one of those cards. So really 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 slow uh card advantage you're probably gonna not gonna be doing that very often um just because you probably have better things to do a lot of the time and if he's in play those better things are probably instance of sorceries and you're probably getting triggers right so i mean i, I guess the main way you would use this is to protect him from removal right so if they like go to kill your guy you you like keep this mana up and then you return them to your hand um but even that's like not that great because you have to leave three you have to leave grixis mana up like all the time and and you know if you ever tap out uh, below three mana then it's like tough so yeah it's like it's like a really really slow card advantage slash protection clause you could probably make this cheaper honestly like this guy to me seems a little bit weak um of, it seems like a little bit weak to me uh like stats wise um value wise like it's nice that you get a card immediately if granted if you've purged something right um so like you you can't just go like you know turn one ponder turn two you know play artifact or, or not e not even that like Play, you know, turn one ponder, turn two, you know, whatever, search for his counter or whatever. Turn three, this guy, he's not going to give you any value, right? So you, you, you have to have purged cards first um, before you before you want to play this guy. So, you, so, like, even playing him on curve is not often or is sometimes not going to work out for you uh, if you don't get the right draw. Um, and then he doesn't deal that much damage when you cast an instructor spell which is fine i mean you're getting some value you know dealing one damage is, is is okay um and then you have this really slow card advantage slash protection engine so i think you could probably make this guy a little bit stronger um that's what i would do i i i would personally can this power element um you know just make this one damage or two damage make it at least one damage and then make some other part of him better like stat his base stats um you know like you could make this deal with one damage and then make him like a three three or something or you could make him you could keep everything the same but make him deal two damage every time you cast a spell that might be a little too good but um or you could make this return clause cheaper so that you can use him a little bit more as, as like a card advantage engine um rather than this like incredibly slow card advantage slash protection engine um and you know that if you make it too cheap it might be too good of a protection so you can make it sorcery speed you know whatever um i like the idea of him being sort of like this nice little card advantage engine but right now it's just like so slow it's just like just play like a divination for crying out loud you know what i mean it's like it's like you're paying six mana for like all this like really slow card draw it's like just play a divination man draw two cards you know three mana so 
Yeah, that's kind of my issue with Yorvan. I think I think all the concepts here are are, are cool. Um, I, I kind of I you know I like this. I like I like having Grixis you know spells decks. I like having cards that care about casting its sorcery spells. You know th those types of things I enjoy as a player. Um, I enjoy the value you get out of playing this guy, but I just think he could use a little bit of help. Um, I don't think he's quite all the way there. So, uh, but yeah, I mean I I would give this guy a seven out of ten. I think. I think the, uh, the concepts are good. Um, I think he just is a little bit too weak for his cost. Um, so yeah, that's my review of Yorvin. I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. Um, and thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.